Hi, third grade friends. This is Mrs. Tingler. I miss you guys so much. This is um, a Wednesday lesson for you. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you watch Miss Clark's lesson from Monday. That way you can get an introduction to the story that we're going to read today. So if you haven't done that already, pause this video and go back and watch hers. But if you've already watched that, then come on, let's read together. Today we're going to be reading the solar system forecast story again. I can't wait to jump into the story with you and investigate all about outer space. Um, we are definitely excited to do some reading and some writing to find, to find out the main idea of the story. Remember, that's the most important part of the story. Can you um, tell me what you remember about main idea? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you. That way we can read this awesome story together. And that way you can see the illustrations close up. Here we go. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> Here we are, friends. Let me Um, if you haven't, you can make an account at getepic.com, which has tons of books that you can read. Um, there's so many, and you can explore the pictures and all kinds of stuff. So, today we're going to be reading Solar System Forecast by Kelly Kaiser Witt and illustrated by Lori Allen Klein. Here's a little bit about the story before we get going. And there's a picture of the author and illustrator while they were working on the book. Let's get started. Good morning, space explorers. That's you. You're an explorer with me as we learn more about space together. This is your weatherman with today's solar system forecast. Hot, cold, windy, calm, rainy, dry, cloudy, clear, and everything in between. Let's take a closer look at the details. Before we re get into the details about each planet, take a look outside. What kind of weather is it today where you are? Describe the weather to someone around you. Awesome. When we learn about a weather forecast, can you say the word forecast? Awesome. A forecast is a prediction. So that means the weather man or weather woman is making a guess at what the weather will be like. They don't always know 100% for sure how, what the weather will be like, but they try to make the best guess possible. So that way you know if you need to wear a snow jacket or mittens, or if you need to bring your umbrella for a rainy day, or if you need your sunglasses and sunscreen for a hot day. So what we're going to do is we're going to read about the weather on each of these planets. Let's get started. The sun is active today with dark sunspots scattered across the surface like polka dots. Look at those sunspots in the picture. Can you point to them? They look like polka dots. Awesome. These holes in the sun's surface are churning or stirring storms. Gas shoots out of these dark holes and flies out on the solar wind, making exploration dangerous. We do not recommend travel. If I look at the picture, it looks a little bit frightening to me. Pause this video and tell someone what you think it would be like to visit the sun. Great job, friends. Let's go to our next planet on the Solar Weather Channel. Mercury is so close to the sun that almost its entire atmosphere has been blown away by the solar wind. 
That must be some really strong wind. With no air, this planet has wild temperature swings. It will get up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Pack something warm for night when temperatures drop to negative 279 degrees Fahrenheit. If you were to go to Mer Mercury, I would have no idea what to pack. We have to deal with 800 degrees in the day and negative 279 degrees at night. That's a huge, huge difference. We definitely don't have that high or that low of temperatures on Earth. Thank goodness, I would either melt or freeze. Oh look friends, it tells us the name of the planet that's next. Now we're at Venus. Hmm, even before I start reading this page, I notice some interesting details. I see, hmm, what, what do you see? Are there any words or details in the pictures that help you know what this planet might be like? Some, maybe you mentioned that there's a storm in the background. That looks like a lot of lightning. My dog hates lightning. I don't think he would like Venus. <laughs> I also see the words hot, hot, hot on the bottom of the drawing. And I see something sticky, sludgy, almost looking like monsters. What's that all about? I'm curious. Let's read the page to find out. Expect thick, yellow, sulfuric acid clouds on Venus today and every day. These clouds trap the sun's heat with a constant greenhouse effect. So these are clouds? Whew. I like earth clouds a lot better than Venus. They don't look like monsters as much. <laughs> Let's go to our next planet. Ah, you all know this one, right? What's this planet called? That's right, it's Earth, where we live. Earth rocks. Let's read about our favorite planet that we live on. Earth is the Goldilocks planet. Not too hot, not too cold. Its nitrogen and oxygen atmosphere-based climate is just right. Let me pause there, friends. Nitrogen and oxygen are the gas in the air that makes up our planet. So we breathe oxygen. When you breathe in and out, you're breathing oxygen. So that's part of our atmosphere, the air around us. And there's also nitrogen in the air as well. That makes up our weather and what the air feels like on Earth. It, we would not survive if there was not oxygen. We need air to breathe. And Earth has the air that's just right for us. Let's keep reading. It is cold at the poles and warm at the equator. Travelers should avoid the Western Atlantic Ocean today where a hurricane is raging. Afternoon storms are possible in some areas. Yep, we know about storms, right? I hope you and your family are safe after the storm last week. That was pretty scary to see those winds. Have any of you been or survived through a hurricane before? I have when I lived in Puerto Rico when I was in third grade when I was your age. It was scary, but luckily we have things like our houses and um, places that protect us from those storms. Pause this video and tell someone around you why Earth is such a great planet for us to live on. You can use your, tree, your circle map that you made with Ms. Clark yesterday if you want. Why is Earth such a great place to live for us? Thanks for sharing, friends. Let's keep reading and go to the next planet. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> I'm already noticing some things in the illustration, are you? Let's read. If you visit Mars today to catch one of its famous pink sunsets, 
watch out for dust devils spinning like little tornadoes across the rust-colored surface. Do you see the dust devils that are spinning like little tornadoes? Point to them if you see them on the page. I also notice it looks like there are some robots. Hmm. I wonder who put those there. That'd be an interesting research project to learn about the robots on Mars. Plus, I love the sunset, so I would love to see some pink sunset if I were to visit Mars. Oh, wow. Big, big planet. <laughs> Storm chasers should head on over to Jupiter where they are sure to nab a big one. The Great Red Spot is a storm that has been raging since Jupiter was first viewed through a telescope 400 years ago. It is the size of three Earths. Keep an eye out for junior-sized storms nearby. Wow, if I compare the size of Earth to the size of Jupiter, hmm. Jupiter is a lot bigger than Earth. And can you believe the storm has lasted over 400 years? Wow, that's a long storm. I wonder what it would be like to live on such a big planet. What would you do if you lived on a planet as big as Jupiter? Pause and talk to someone about it, or you can write about it. What would it be like to live on such a big planet like Jupiter? Great job, friends. Here we are at Saturn. Wow. Hmm. It looks like we're viewing Saturn from the inside of an airplane or a spaceship probably, right? If you look at the details that the pilots are seeing, or astronauts, you can see pictures of it and little details that we can't quite read, but we can get some more information from the text. Don't let Saturn's smooth appearance fool you. Its weather can be electrifying. A recent lightning storm covered an area as big as the United States. Cloud lovers should make a special note of the giant cloud over the North Pole that has six sides like a hexagon. Hmm, it's electrifying. I hope you wouldn't get shocked if you visit Saturn. Hmm. There are at least 170 moons throughout the solar system. Did you know that? 170 moons. We just see one from Earth, but if you have a telescope, you can explore some of the other moons that we can see sometimes if the weather is right. Plus, you can look up research pictures of the other moons that exist in our solar system. Let's keep reading. Only one has a thick, hazy atmosphere, Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Just like Earth, the main gas in Titan's atmosphere is nitrogen. But if you visit, make sure you take your jacket and an umbrella. Titan has a 100% chance of methane rain drizzle today. Methane rain does not sound so good to me. I think I'll stay on Earth. <laughs> Looking for calm weather? Try Uranus. One Uranus year lasts as long as 84 Earth years. Most of its stormy weather happens during the season changes, about every 21 Earth years. Spring came to Uranus a few years ago and will last until 2027. Wow, can you imagine having winter for 21 years long or summer for 21 years long? Hmm, maybe that does sound kind of nice. If you take a look at the picture on the, of the illustration, I love looking at the colors of Uranus. I wonder, I'm just curious, friends, what do you think makes the different colors that show on the planet? 
Why do you think it's so many different colors? It's a great guess. Maybe we can do some research later to find out why it's those beautiful rainbow colors. Hang on to your hats if you're visiting Neptune <laughs> with winds up to 1500 miles per hour. Wow, this is the windiest planet in the solar system. The methane gas in its below freezing atmosphere gives Neptune its very, or its beautiful blue color. It is beautifully blue, but if it has winds that fast and it's below freezing, whew, I don't know if it'd be my first choice to visit. <laughs> Look at that astronaut. He's having to hold on to something to stay, uh, to stay uh, upright. <laughs> Pluto's atmosphere is freezing and falling to the ground like snow. Oh. <laughs> Clear sky should return as Pluto moves even further away from the sun on its oval orbit and the atmosphere has completely frozen and fallen to the ground. Pluto is actually a special case, friends. It's not one of our main planets in our solar system. It's actually called a dwarf planet. Can you say dwarf planet? Good job. It just means that it's a little bit too small to be one of the most important planets in our solar system. But luckily, we still know a lot about it as we do, as a lot of scientists do research to explore Pluto. <laughs> That's today's solar system forecast, fellow voyagers. Enjoy the good weather, keep an eye out for storms, and travel safely. I didn't even know our weatherman. He looks a little bit like an alien to me. <laughs> well, thanks for the information, weatherman. Now we know what kind of weather we can experience in the solar system, besides just Earth that we get to see all the time. If you read this book on Epic, you can take a quiz on the book, and you can also find other books that you might like if you enjoyed this one. I don't know about you, but I loved this story. Let me go back to just me. Hi again, friends. Did you like the story? Me too. What was your favorite part or what did you learn that is new information to you? Share with someone around you or write it down. Great job. Now, for today, we are going to be doing a writing activity. Let me show you what you'll be writing. We read about all of the planets in our solar system today, and we learned a lot of details about the weather and what they looked like and some of the ways that you need to survive there. So for today, you're going to get creative you're going to get to make your own planet. Crazy, I know, right? Let me show you what you can do to create your own planet using a tree map. Here's my tree map. I made this one on a piece of paper so you can do the same thing. At the top, you write, my planet is called and you get to give it a name. You can call it anything you want. Maybe I'll call mine, hmm, Tingler World, or, hmm, Rainbow City. I don't know, I'm just throwing out ideas. I bet you can come up with a great name for your planet. After you tell what it's called, then you'll use the branches on the tree map to tell some information about it. You'll tell what does it look like. Hmm, is it big? Like humongous big? Or is it teeny tiny? What kind of colors is it? Where is it located in the solar system? 
what other ways would um, astronauts be able to find your planet to know that they found the right one? What would they need to know about what it looks like? And you can draw a picture too. That way we can see what you're thinking of on the paper. In the middle, you'll tell what is the weather like at your planet. Maybe it's freezing cold and windy like Neptune. Or maybe it's super hot, hot, hot like Venus. Or maybe it's a snow blizzard all the time like Pluto. You get to decide or you can make up your own. Make sure you tell us with writing and a drawing if you want of what the weather is like on your planet. And then lastly, what do you need to survive there? On this part of the tree map, you'll tell how can people or how can humans survive on your planet? Maybe they need to bring oxygen with them to breathe correctly. When astronauts go to outer space, they have to wear a special helmet. That way they can breathe and not worry about if there's oxygen in the air. Maybe they need to bring a huge jacket because it's super cold. Maybe they need to bring supplies to build a shelter. You tell us what they need to survive at your planet. Once you're done, if you would like, you can text a picture of your tree map to your teacher. I bet they would love to see what idea you came up with. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay. All right, friends, I can't wait to see what ideas you come up with for your planet. Maybe I'll spend some time coming up with my idea this afternoon. I hope you're doing well. I miss you so, so much. It's unbelievable. And I can't wait to hopefully see you guys soon when this is all over. If you have a question about this video or other videos, make sure you contact your teacher or you can comment below and we'll respond. To make sure that you um, see our other videos, you can subscribe to our channel too. I can't wait to see um, what you guys come up with and third grade loves you so, so much. Okay guys, bye-bye.